I'm Michael Jeffries, and we're at the Desert Hot Spring Spa in beautiful Palm Springs. As a professional magician for the past 16 years, I've seen firsthand the powerful effect that magic can have on the opposite sex. On this video, you'll see as we took a group of non-magicians, people who have never done magic before, taught them the tricks, and then brought them to a nightclub, Zelda's Beach Club, in Palm Springs, and let them loose. So let's watch now and see as they flirt with magic. Hi. Hi. Need a light? Sure. Thanks. You're welcome. I couldn't help but noticing those eyes, those lips, that cigarette. Sorry. Watch the cigarette. Because all I need you to do is blow on the cigarette when I count to three. Watch. One, two, three, blow. Look. Gone. Oh, my God. So what else can you make disappear? Well, I'm waiting. Good evening, ladies. Welcome to Zelda's. Thank you. How you doing? Ooh, Rob, check this out. Whoa. Watch this. I don't know. I, I don't know, guy. It worked. What before? Well, here we are in beautiful, windy Palm Springs with Shirley and Laurie, and we're ready to learn the first magic trick on the video, the one you saw me do in the nightclub, hot match. To do hot match, you'll need a couple of props. You'll need some matches, scissors, a safety pin, and a rubber band. Cut off the striker from the box of matches, but hang on to the matches, because you'll need them. What you'll do is you'll take one of the matches, place it inside the striker, fold the piece of striker over the match like this, take the safety pin, open it up, place it inside the striker like this underneath, and then close the safety pin. Okay? Now this brings up a good point. If I were to do it this way, I wouldn't be able to safety pin it inside the coat. So you want to make sure to turn it around and have the safety pin part up. Okay. Once you have it like that, close the safety pin, take the rubber band, and wrap it around the match. And what you really have there is a portable lighter. And this, of course, goes inside your coat. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Meredith? Meredith is here, and as you can see, she is fully prepared. There's her match. Her striker's all set. She was in action. She would just pull down on the match and it would, of course, light. If it didn't light, for some reason, Meredith here, being a Girl Scout, is fully prepared for just such an emergency. And that's always a good idea to have extras. Thank you, Meredith. And that is Hot Match. All right, it's time to learn trick number two, vanishing cigarette trick. To do this trick, you'll need a pen, a safety pin, and a piece of elastic. The first thing to do is cut the elastic so it's approximately 12 inches. Then the next thing <laughs> is to take the safety pin, attach it to the end, and tie a knot. Take the other end of the elastic, feed it through the pen cap. Now what you'll need to do is take, I used an ice pick, poked a hole in the pen cap, then fed the the uh, elastic through and then tied a knot. All right. You'll also notice that the pen cap is broken off there, the little thing that you clip to your pocket. You won't need it for this trick. Okay. You also won't need the pen, so you can place that somewhere, Shirley. I'll take the cigarette. Now, this gets safety pin inside your jacket. So, Laura, you've got the jacket there. Shirley, safety pin it. Right if there's a little tag with the price, not the price, the, <laughs> the size on the back right there. That safety pin there. Now, 
When the cigarette vanishes, it's going to go up your sleeve and it'll end up right here, hanging from your coat. So put the coat on, but as you do so, take, if you're, I'm right-handed, so I'll be placing the cigarette inside the cap of the pen with my right hand. So I grab the cap with my left hand and I put my coat on, feeding the pen cap into my left fist and I hide it with my fingers. Now you don't want to have anybody standing to your right because they'll get a glimpse of the elastic against your wrist. So kind of if I was going to do this trick, I would do it to Lori. <laughs> and what I would do is I would take the cigarette from her, as I did in the bar, place it inside my fist. Now what she doesn't know, and I'll pull this up so you can see it, I'm really feeding the cigarette, lit end first, into the pen cap. Once that gets in, if I push just a little farther, it becomes locked in place. That's not going anywhere. That's how you want it. The lack of oxygen inside the pen cap will, of course, extinguish the lit cigarette. So to make it vanish, what do I do? I release my grip on the cigarette, and of course, that'll cause it to shoot up my sleeve. Except if I do it just like this, I have no cover. So there's where some flirting comes in. That's where I want to make a cute remark, ask her to gently blow on the cigarette. As I do that, I place my other hand over the cigarette for cover. I let go, you blow, and I can even now pull my sleeve back to show that nothing's there. I open my hand, the cigarette's gone, and she, of course, is amazed. And that's the vanishing cigarette trick. Excuse me. I was wondering if you uh, happen to have lost this pen. No, it's not mine. Are you sure? The thing. This pen right here? No. Wow. How did you do that? Well, magicians usually don't reveal their secrets. Is there something I could do to make you reveal it? Well, maybe. How about meeting me back here at 11 o'clock for a drink or so? No, no. Uh, how do I know you're not some sort of a weirdo? Well, I'm not a weirdo. Well, maybe. 11 o'clock. Come on, right here. All right. Come on, right. Great. See you then. All right. It's time to learn the secret to trick number three the vanishing pen trick. And that leaves off right where the vanishing cigarette trick ended. In other words, you've already got all the materials you need. You've got the pen, you've got the elastic, and you've got the safety pin. Now, what you do this time is instead of making the pen vanish up your sleeve, it's too big, so you're gonna let it fly into your coat. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna put on the coat. I'm gonna reach back and this is the position to start the trick. Again, if I'm going to do the trick, I can get the phone number of the lady, have her sign her name, whatever, and I'm all set. I can place it right back inside the cap, okay? And I'm ready to go. Sometimes if I'm in an office, I'll pick up a pen off a table. If I see that they have the same kind, I'll ditch my pen from here and make theirs disappear. And then later on, I'll give them mine, okay? But to do it this way, the pen goes inside here. If I want to make it vanish, what I do is I bring my hands together release the pen, disappears. Now there's a couple ways to, for misdirection. One way is you can clap your hands together to make it disappear. That's one way. Notice when I clap my hands, my elbows fly out. That opens my coat up just enough for the pen to shoot inside. Okay, once again, like that, it's gone. Okay, it happens in the blink of an eye. Okay, if the, if the clapping's a little bit too much for you, you can just bring your hands together like that and then show, show it gone, just like that, okay? The important thing is to practice the trick over and over and get so confident at making the pen disappear that you can focus all your attention on the woman. And that's the vanishing pen trick. Oh, I like Scotty, that. You're so crowded over there. Jeez, I know. Ooh. Unbelievable sometimes. Thanks for the drink. You're welcome. Hi. Do you like magic? Uh, I don't know. I magic is sort of, you know. Kind of Would you like to see a magic trick? Okay, if you want to do one, that's fine. I'll watch. Okay, this is my little magic trick for you. Okay? All right. What we got here is a regular napkin. Here, like this. Okay. Now, I'm no artist, but I'm going to draw hard, okay? Well, that's okay. I'm no, no artist, so I... I know. I won't criticize. Okay, I'm going to put... Okay, now, you've had relationships, right? Good ones, bad ones. Bad ones, ones. yeah, so-so. Yeah, right, yep. Let's play this as, like, uh, your heart's been torn a few times, okay? Oh, no. oh okay, I can relate to that. Yeah, oh, jeez. Okay. 
The same with me. And now what we're going to do is going to crush this. Pretend like you just crush your heart, okay? Okay. Crush this thing in here. So, like this. Uh -huh. Okay, now, why don't I, I've got a magic pen here. Why don't I, uh, like, have you hold this for a minute, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, here it is, okay. Why don't you open it up? Okay. We're going to tap this three times with the magic pen. Okay. One, two, three. That's now, it. why don't you take a little blow? Okay, why don't you open that up? Okay. I'm going to find some in here? A diamond? Or we'll something? see, oh, we'll okay. see. Oh, it's still it's not coming apart. Wait a minute. Oh. It's all one piece. Uh-huh. That's amazing. You ripped it up, and I saw you do it. <laughs> I've got to look at the heart. Kind of like that, huh? That's great. <laughs> I, gee, I hate to say it, but I'm impressed. That's pretty well, good. Well, you should be. That's good. I like it. How about putting your phone number on there? That's the trick, right? Yeah, that's the trick. Okay. Okay? You win. All I'll right. do it. <laughs> There you go. How about here's to us? <laughs> All right. Thanks. Now it's time to learn rip but not torn or the torn and restored napkin trick. To do this trick, you'll need a pen, a coin. Any coin will work. We're using a penny here. Hang on to that for me, Shirley. And two napkins. Take one of the napkins before you perform the trick and draw a heart on the center of it. Maybe you can go in the corner of the nightclub or restaurant and draw just a simple heart, just like that, no big deal. Then take the napkin, open it up, and make it up into a ball like this. Then place the napkin inside your side coat pocket with the coin. You've got your pen, you've got your napkin, and you're all set to perform the trick. That's the setup. If you're left-handed, obviously, everything would go in the left coat pocket. So you turn to the person you're going to do the trick for, and you say, Hi, what's your name? Lori. Hi, Lori. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael. Beautiful, windy day here, isn't it? Yes, it is. It certainly is. What I'm going to do, Lori, is draw a little heart right there on the napkin like that. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a relationship where you've had your heart torn out? I mean, we've all had that happen. As I say that, I'm going to place this pen back inside my right coat pocket, and as I place it inside, I'm going to steal out the balled up napkin right here and palm it. This is called palming a napkin. Aren't magicians clever? So you've got the napkin balled up in your right fist. If you want to use cocktail napkins, those are a little smaller and those are a little easier to palm. So you've got the palm napkin here, perfectly natural misdirection to pick the pen, put it away, and palm out the napkin. They shouldn't suspect a thing. Make sure to keep your fingers closed and to keep your other hand closed in a fist too. So both hands look the same. You say, watch, I'll take the napkin and I'll tear it up. Tear up the napkin. Say, I'll make a little ball of the pieces. Now watch what I'm doing. I've got the good napkin at the bottom. I place the torn pieces on top. Okay, I've got the ripped ones up here, the good one at the bottom. But when I show it to Lori, she thinks this is all one napkin. Okay, because what I do is I take them out of my hand as I turn them. So the good, the ripped pieces are in front. The good piece is behind it. Now when I place them back into my right hand after showing the napkins, I do a little turn. This is very important. It's a little wrist turn. And what I'm doing is that wrist turn puts the good napkin on top. Okay, let me show you again. You've got the torn pieces here. I bring it out. I show one napkin. As I go to place it back in the hand, I've done the turn. And now I've got good pieces there. You turn to the person and you say, hold out your hand, please, and hang on to the pieces. Notice I say pieces, so again, implies that you're handing them the napkin is torn up. Now, when you pull it out, be careful that pieces don't stick out. That's why it's important that when you make them into a ball, you keep everything real tight and push it into your hand. So now when I pull out that good piece, I, I can do it with confidence because I know the rib pieces are nice and tight into a ball down here. So I say, hold that your hand for me, if you would, Laurie, and hang on to the pieces. And I have in my pocket a lucky coin. And as I say that, I reach into my pocket, I drop off the, the rib pieces, and I take out the coin, my lucky coin, tap her hand three times, have her blow, say this has nothing to do with the trick, but it feels incredibly good, and open up your hand, Lori, and open the napkin. And she does so, and of course the napkin is fully restored. And that 
is ripped but not torn or the torn and restored napkin trick. Remember while you're performing to stay totally focused on the trick. Totally focused. Having fun. Anytime. Why don't you let me uh, show you a trick I just learned? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna use this penny from the waitress's tip. Okay. I'm sure she won't miss it. I'm gonna cover it with this salt shaker. Okay. You can't see that, can no, you? No. No. Well, I'm gonna cover it with my napkin just to keep my secrets safe. Now, wouldn't it be a neat trick if when I moved the shaker, the penny was gone? It would. Think it so? would. It would. <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, my God. Why don't I just make the shaker disappear instead? Oh, my God. How'd you do that? How'd you do that? Now, you know us Where's women, we never tell our secrets. Never? Well, maybe you can get it out of <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the next trick is the vanishing salt shaker trick, or as we like to call it, salt free. To do this trick, you'll need a couple of props. You'll need the salt shaker, which you can find luckily at most restaurants, so they already have that there, a napkin, and the big bucks, a penny. To do this trick, you want to have the people you're doing it for believe that the penny is going to disappear. That's the whole premise of the trick. All their attention is on the coin. So when the shaker does go, they should have no idea that it's going to vanish. OK, would you uh, hold my shaker? <laughs> Take the napkin, open it up, have them focus on the penny. Say, keep your eye on the penny. I'm going to cover it up with the shaker. And to protect my secret, that's the excuse you give for wrapping the salt shaker with the napkin. Now, see, if I wrap it up once, they might be able to see when the shaker vanishes that it's not there. So what you want to do is double the napkin. So it's nice and thick, and it'll retain the shape of the salt shaker when it vanishes. Because how is it going to vanish? When you tell them to keep their eye on the penny, it'll disappear. You go one, two, three. As I say three, I snap my fingers. I come back to the edge of the table. All my attention's focused here. I'll bring it up so you can see it. I'm going to release the salt shaker so it falls into my lap. Of course, when I do the actual trick, I will do it at table level. So in other words, they never see the shaker drop. There it just went. And now it's gone. But again, notice how the napkin retains the shape of the shaker. So it's done like this, regular speed. Keep your eye on the penny. When I lift up the salt shaker, the penny will be gone. One, two, three. Look, the penny's completely vanished. Ah, it didn't work. Well, let me try it again. In fact, this time, what if I make the salt shaker disappear? Show it completely gone. Pause a second. Then you can reach underneath and take it out if you want. Or I, some people like to leave it there. I would suggest taking it out, because eventually you're going to need to produce it anyway. Don't leave it in your lap. And that is the vanishing salt shaker trick. I was just wondering if you believe that the hand is faster than the eye. I don't know. Why do you ask? Well, I just want to show you a trick. What kind of trick? Well, like a magic trick. You got a $100 bill on you? Well, maybe a, a five or a one. OK. I don't know. Let me look. I think I've got a five. I got a one yeah, right I do. There. Here. Okay. Goodbye, five, right? Can you make this disappear? Mm, possibly. Oh, okay. Let me see. What do you got? A five yeah. and my one. Do me a favor. Just fold this in half for me, okay? So the All president right. stays out. Okay. Fold it in half one more time. Great. And fold it down so that the big five faces my big one right there. Okay. All right. Great. Now, what do I want you to do is hand that to me, okay? Right there. Goodbye, okay. five dollars. Well, maybe. We'll okay. see. Okay. Now, open your hand for me, okay? I'm going to place this right inside there. All right. Five right on top of my one. And we're going to close that. Okay, this is where the magic takes place. Okay, I'm ready. How much do you have in there? In my hand? In your hand. Six dollars. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, well, I'm going to reach in there and take out... <laughs> I can't look, right? What am I going to get? How about the five? Okay. Okay, there's the five. Okay. Now, this is where the magic takes place again. I want you to blow on this really quick. God, I don't believe it. 
it. That's great. You turned the five into the one. Yeah. That's and what do you got in your hand now? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I've got the five. That's right. That is great. I mean, how could you get it into my palm? It's magic. Yeah, that's great. What was your name? My name's Larry. What's yours? That's Larry. Okay. Okay, how about another drink? You buying? Put my five dollars away? You've got the five. I only have a one. Okay, I'll split it with you. Okay. okay. Thanks. <laughs> The next trick is called Gimme Five. And this is a great trick to do because you get to touch the girl's hand. Now, what you do is you have some bills, some tape, and some pair of scissors. The bills you will need are two fives and a one to prepare the trick. Take one of the $5 bills and cut out the small five corner, the little circle right there. Cut that out. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of the scotch tape, fold it into a teeny little square so that when you're done, you can tape that little round five onto the corner, the bottom left-hand corner of the $1 bill, creating a gimmicked bill. And what's neat about this trick is you can just carry it around in your wallet. It's all you need is this $1 bill with the corner of the five, and you're all set anytime, anywhere to do give me five. So to do the trick, you have the one, and you can borrow the five. That's a nice thing to do. So if I was here doing it with Lori, what we would do is I would have her take out her $5 bill, and you happen to have one there, Lori, and I'd say do exactly as I do. Notice I'm keeping my fingers over the little corner, hiding the little five, we'll call it a spot, right there. Do exactly as I do. Hold it like this and fold the bill in half, like that, but fold it so, so the other side's out. You want to make sure that when you're done folding it, the little indice on the corner shows. So in other words, if they don't do it right, like right now I hadn't explained it to her properly, I'll take the bill from her and I'll show her what I want to do. Just go with it. One of the things you have to remember about magic is you're in control. They don't know what you're going to do, so you take charge. Okay? You're confident, you're up, you're positive about what you're doing. Everything's going to work out just fine. So, you take the bill from her, you've got the real five here, you've got the one with the fake five, and you say, hold out your hand for me, if you would, and say, look, I'll place both bills in your hand, you place the real five on top of the gimmicked one, with the five spot on the back. Both bills go in her hand, now when she closes her hand, what's going to happen is that turns the bills over, and now the five spot is on top. Okay, so once again, you place it up near the front of her hand, have her close her hand, that revolves the bills over, and now the gimmick five is on top, but she doesn't know that. So, to distract her in case she noticed which order the bills went in, and maybe she noticed the five wasn't on top and it shouldn't, you distract them by asking them a question, a simple question. For instance, how many bills, total money amount, would you say you have in your hand at this point? Six dollars, that's exactly what I would have said, Lori. Now, I'm going to reach inside and remove one of the bills. What she doesn't know is I'm going to reach inside and remove the top bill, but I don't want her to see me pull it out because she may get a glimpse of the bottom bill, the five. So what I do is I cover up both hands, what my hand covers her hand, I like that for cover. I reach inside, pull out the top bill, the fake five, and then turn her hand over so she can't open it up. I say, if I have the five, which this looks like a $5 bill, what does that leave you with? The dollar, exactly. You're doing so good. <laughs> now, you want to ask them because you don't want them to forget. If you rush through this trick, they may forget that you took the five, and at the end they'll say, well, so what? I knew, I knew that I had the five all along. To prevent that, say, if I have the five, you must have the one. Great. Now, blow on the five. As she blows, I'm going to turn the bill over, revealing the one. But if I, if I do that, it's obvious, it's obvious how it's done. So I go underneath her chin. As I say, blow on the five, she blows. As I am underneath her tin, as all I do is with my fingertips, turn the piece over, it comes out, and it's a one. It's a very visual thing. There's the five, she blows, my fingertips just slightly turn. It's not even really my palm, it's just a, lo a little move like that in the blow, and I come back, there's a one. They'll be amazed. When you open up the bill, say, look, I've got the one now, and I keep my thumb over the corner, you should have the five, look inside. There's the five, you act impressed too, you enjoy it, say open it up. And now that we have a little bit of money, what do you say I buy you a drink? Okay. <laughs> she says, okay. And that is how you do Give Me Five. One of the great things about learning magic is that no matter what happens, 
You're always in control. <laughs> now, you see, normally that would be a problem, but not if you know magic. I can't believe the one. Oh, you can't saw her too? Her. Yeah. She dances like an idiot. I can't believe that. Hey, why are you paying attention to me? <laughs> hey, Rick, I know we just kind of met, but I was hoping maybe you'd buy me a drink. Cause... But look at her. I mean, I can't believe this. Oh, dance. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Okay. Make a deal. All right. If I'm going to show you a magic trick. You like magic, right? Okay, if I show yeah, you, I, you, yeah. If I show you a good magic trick, and you really like it, then will you buy me a drink? See if it's good, yeah. Okay, I okay. Will. All you yeah. need is a, a book of matches. How about these over here? Well, okay, those yeah. will do. Right. Sure. Okay. okay, now I'm gonna need your assistance in this, okay? All right, okay. okay. What I need you, for you to do is to um, help me select a match from the center with you, please. Just point it Right here? This one? Okay, great. Okay. okay, now, as I'm lighting this, I need to put this book into your hands, so. Is it? No, the other hand, because okay. it's better that way. Okay? What do you... No, I'm not gonna burn oh, it. Just hold it. it very tightly, All right. okay? Okay. 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 Okay, now. I want you to help me put magic into it. Blow it together on my hands. Now, All right, what? Now turn your hand over and look inside the book. Oh my God! What, how'd you get the burnt match back in here? I can't. <laughs> I can't you believe like it, this. Don't you? you like the trick. How did you do that? Did you like it? Yes. <laughs> you owe me a drink. Okay, I owe you a drink. <laughs> Jeez, I can't believe. It. Waitress. Nice work on the nails, ladies. Yeah. Okay, the next trick is called the elusive match. And to do this trick, you'll need a book of matches, and that's all. The setup requires you to take the center match and light it on fire and blow it out, but don't tear it out of the book. To do this, take the center match from the book, bend it up, take a match from the back of the book, tear it out, light it, and then light the one in the center, if you would. Blow both matches out. Get rid of one of the matches so you have the one burnt in the center of the book. That's your whole setup. Close the matchbook, and you're all ready to perform. Turn to the person you're going to do it for. Hi, babe. How are you? Hi. Good to see you. You look great. Can I uh, ask you to hold out your hand and help me with the trick? OK. Great. Now, I'm going to have her select a match but I don't want her to see the burnt one. If I just open it up and say, select a match, reach out and touch one, she'll see the burnt match here. So as I open up the book, my thumb is going to lever down that burnt match, and I'm going to conceal the burnt match underneath my thumb. So from her point of view, she cannot see the burnt match. Okay, it's a simple action. As you go to open up the book, the thumb pulls down and hides the match. So go ahead and with your hand, if you would, Lori, touch a match near the center. You want to have them touch a match near the center because at the end, when the burnt match reappears magically inside the book of matches, it's near the center as well, and it, it makes sense. It's congruent. So she touches the match here. I pull it out, ask her to hold out her hand for me. As I close the matchbook, I lever the burnt match back into the book with my third finger, excuse me, my middle finger goes up in place and closes the book. She shouldn't suspect anything. She's not suspecting anything. You're just taking a match out that she touched and closing the book. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Just place it in her hand. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to light this match, and as she closes her hand, you're going to let this match go over your shoulder. So the way you do it is strike the match. Say, close your hand like that, and on about the third one, I just let the match go over my shoulder. All your attention is here. So you're looking here. Her eyes are here. You're touching her hand, even squeezing a little bit. She sees you shake the match out. No reason for her to look here. If your attention's there, they'll look there. Let the match go over your shoulder. Be careful it doesn't go on the guy next to you. Okay, then pretend, come down, say, watch. I'll place the match here, blow, gone. It's all one action. Here, the match is there. She believes the match is there. If you believe it's there, you blow. Open your hand, look inside the book of matches. She opens it up and is floored, stunned, blown away to find that the burnt match is not only back in the book of matches, but it's securely fastened in place. And if you can just take and put your phone number on there, I'll call you 
Thanks so much, and that's how you do the elusive match. How long have you been waiting? Gosh, it's been a half an hour at least. Well, I hope I don't have to wait that long. <sighs> what do you do? Well, I work in an office. I'm a secretary. What about you? I sell life insurance. Well, that's not so funny. People need life insurance. I guess. I'll tell you what. You never know when you're going to need some. I'll give you my business card. Okay. You know, a friend of mine told me that magic drives women crazy. I don't know. You I'll tell you me? what. Why don't you put your initials on my business card? Just anywhere? Sure. All right. And I'm going to take the business card, and I'll put my initials on it. Well, go ahead. It's there. Take a look. No way. <laughs> How'd you do that? I told you, it's magic. No kidding. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. We'll do it one more time. Except, you know, I don't know your first name, so why don't you write your first name okay. on my business card? Janice. Mm -hmm. Hi, Janice. Hi. I'm Barry. Hi, Barry. But you'll know that in a minute because I'm going to write my first name on the card. You couldn't do it twice. How did you do that? Right oh, in front of me. That's easy. But you know, as long as you have two cards and you only need one, why don't you put your phone number on one of them for me? Clever. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. I guess magic does drive women crazy. Sometimes. to learn initial impressions. To do this trick, you'll need a pair of scissors, a thick rubber band, a stack of your all-important business cards, and a pen. First thing you need to do is take the pen and write your initials in the upper left-hand portion of your business card. So I've written MJ the top left-hand portion of the business card. If you'd place your finger right there for me, Lori, so that doesn't blow away. And take another business card, and in the top left-hand portion, write your first name. Okay, so there I've written Michael. You have another finger there I can borrow? Great. Now, you're not done quite with your setup. You still need to do one more thing. You need to take the scissors, take one more business card, and cut it in half, okay? You only need one half, you need the left half, so you don't need the right half anymore, so another finger. <laughs> now, take first the one with your name on it, place it on top of the stack, then take the one with your initials on it, that goes on top of that card, and then the half card goes on top of the whole stack. And by taking the rubber band and placing it in just the portion where the half card comes in contact with the second card, you're hiding the fact that there's really a half card on top of the deck. So, if I get it just lined up just right, it should look like one business card. Okay, and you want to make those kind of smooth. Okay, now if no one's really suspecting anything, it should look like I've got one card there. Now, you're all set to do the trick. Get your pen, your business cards, place them in your pocket, you're all ready to begin. So if I was going to do the trick, I'll do it on both of you. Start off by saying, hi, um, we've never met before, have we? No. What I'd like you to do is to take your initials for me and place them right there for me, Shirley. Go ahead and sign up. You want to hold the pack for them because if they take it, she might pull on the card and that half card may come loose. So I like to hold it, steady it for them, keeping my thumb on top of it or just steadying the whole pack. So she signed her initials there. And what I'm going to do now is place the card face down onto the table. What she doesn't know is that my initials are also on the card that she just signed, but she can't see that because the half card is covering my initials. So what I do is I grab the corner of the card, 
pull it out face down. Okay, come over to the table face down and watch what happens. As it comes out face down, my initials are now on that card. I set it down. Would you place your hand on top of it for me? Now I say to her, I'll sign my initials on that card, but I'll do it by magic. And I just go like that with the pen, or you can just snap your fingers, or you can just say, look, I've got my initials on the card too. Take a look. She turns the card over, and there, next to her initials, are my initials. And that's initial impression. If you want to repeat the trick, which is kind of neat, because then you can give them one card and have their place their phone number on the back of your other card, do it again. So I turn to Lori, say, Lori, I've got a stack of my business cards here. Do me a favor and just write your first name right there for me. Right there, I'll hold the cards for you. Great, she writes her first name there, okay. Great, I do the same thing. I say, look, we'll place your signed card, it's the only thing on the card, face down on the table like that. So all I do is take the pen, magically write my name on there. Did you see it happen? Did you see the magic? Take a look, it's really there. She turns it over, and magically, there's my name on the same card next to her. In fact, Lori, after we're done here, I think you should put your phone number right there. Go ahead. <laughs> and it's called Initial Impression. You know, Larry, I always wondered what it is that makes two people so compatible with each other. I mean, could it be like the look in somebody's eye or, or maybe like the way their hand feels in yours? I bet we could be compatible. What you do you think? think? So. Mm -hmm. I really do. We could give it a try sometime. As a matter of fact, I have something I'd like to show you. Would you like to see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here I've got four coins, okay? All right. In no particular order. I've got 41 cents. In my hand, I have a special prediction. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd just like you to touch two of those coins. Any two. Any two. Would you do that for me? Excellent. Okay, we're going to get rid of these, and we're going to keep these two. Now, I'd like you to pick up both of those coins in your hand, one in each hand. Okay. Like this? Yeah. And I want you to just kind of feel them in your hands. You know, close your palm. Just feel them. Right. Now, one of them is going to feel a little bit more special than the other. Okay? Now, what I want you to do for me is just open one of your hands. Anyone. Just any hand. Okay, we're going to get rid of this coin. Close your hand. Now, what you have left is the last coin, which means it's obviously the most special one. Now, right. on the count of three, like a butterfly, we're going to open our hands together, okay? All right. One, two, three. I think we're compatible. Whoa. How did you do that? You have the dime and I have the dime too. That's right. You know what that means. These I are really compatible. do. Compatible. Absolutely. God, how about another drink? <laughs> okay. All right. The next trick is called quick change. And to do this trick, Shirley, I'd like to um, use you if you would. To begin the trick, however, let me point out you need five coins, four of which you're going to show them one of which you're not. So before I do the trick to Shirley, I'm going to hide one of the coins in my hand, in this case, a dime. She knows I have something in my hand, but I won't tell her what coin it is. So to get into the trick, I'll say to her, Shirley, look, I've got four coins here, penny, dime, quarter, and a nickel. And in this hand, I have a surprise. But I'm not quite ready to let you see my surprise just yet. <laughs> Promises. <laughs> what I'd like you to do for me is to reach out and touch two of the coins. We're going to eliminate some coins. So touch two and we're going to keep some. So touch two of the coins, any two you want. Okay. okay, the nickel and the penny. Fine, we'll eliminate those. No problem. There's two coins left, a quarter and a dime. Do me a favor, reach out, pick one up in each hand for me. Pick up a coin in each hand. Okay, and hold them in your hand. One will feel special. Okay, now We've eliminated two of the coins, okay? We eliminated the dime, we eliminated the nickel and the penny. She's got the dime. That's the coin she's going to end up with, whether she knows it or not, whether she likes it or not, pretty much. If she had touched the other two, let's go back for a second, go ahead and put these down. If she had touched the dime and the quarter, what would I have done? I would have very matter-of-factly said, reach out, touch two coins, touch the dime coin. Fine. Those are the two you want to work with. Pick one up in each hand. We'll eliminate the nickel and the penny. So what you're doing is you're going to eliminate the coins that, that don't involve the dime, okay? It's elimination. So, pick up those two coins, fine. Get those out of there. 
got those two. Feel them. One will feel special. You know which one it is. Open your hand. Open one of your hands for me. Okay, she opened the quarter. I say, fine, you're left holding one coin. Okay, I know she's got the diamond there, so I say, that's the special one because you held on to it. You're holding a coin. I'm holding a coin. Open your hand. Let's see if we're compatible. We are a perfect match. Now, notice how I acted like that's what I wanted. That's the special hand because it's tight. Okay, all my attention. There can be no hesitation, no fumbling. If she even suspects that I would have gone the other way or I had some other outs in mind, the trick is ruined and you have no magic. And you like magic. So let's, let's do it one more time with a different out. Let's say she had done the opposite. Now you, you got the dime and the quarter in each hand. I say, open your hand. One will feel special. Open your hand. Now she opens the hand with a dime. Great, that coin felt special. You could have, you know, opened it there. That's the one you open. I completely forget about the other hand. She opens that hand. I said, great. Look, we match. Ah! Right? There it is. And that's how you do quick change. Remember to read your Flirting with Magic book. It's hot. Hi. Hi. My name is Ken. God, you're beautiful. Hi, Ken. Do you believe in magic? Um, yeah? Why, do you know I, some I, magic? Yes, I do. I'd like to show you some magic. Right I now? I promise, I promise I won't hurt you. Right here? I promise. Yeah, right here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me see your hands. Go like this. Okay. Bring them closer. Okay. Like that. Okay, I want you to make a fist. Like that. All right, now this is... I'm going to take some ash from this ashtray. Ooh. Uh, what is no he worry. doing? Don't no worry. Cool? I'm going to take it and rub it on the back of your hand like this. Look at that. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Do you, like you feel the magic? Look at that. It feels like a mini massage. It does? <laughs> yeah, it's great. I think I give great massages. Do I really do. Yes, I do. Look at this. Look at the magic. Look at the magic. Okay, I want you to open your hands. Oh. Is that great? <laughs> How do you do <laughs> The magic went you through your hand. You got it to go through. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Well, can I get your phone number? And uh, we can create some more magic later. <laughs> Would you like that? Come on. What do you think? Yeah? <laughs> Isn't that fun? Isn't that great? This trick is called Mystic Ashes. It's one of my favorites because all the work is done ahead of time. Let me show you what I mean. If I was going to go up to Lori in a bar and do Mystic Ashes, what I would have to do is ahead of time, go by an ashtray and pick up a little bit of ash, touch it on my middle finger just like that, and I'm all set to do Mystic Ashes. That's the only setup. That's the beauty of this trick. You don't have to carry anything with you. Just dip a little bit of the ash on your finger. Load up heavy though, okay? So I've got a lot of ash there. I would go up to Laura and say, hi, how are you? Good. Let me show you something. Um, if you would, hold out both your hands, palm down for me. Palm down. Just a little bit like this. Now, when I come over to Lori, she doesn't know. I've just loaded her up with mystic ashes, all right? Cigarette ashes. Because when I touched her palm, I got a nice big load of ashes on her palm. She never felt a thing. Did you ever feel a thing? No. Not a thing. That's why magicians never get second dates. No. Okay. Stop it. Okay. Squeeze tight. Tight, tight, tight. Now, she doesn't know about the ashes there. I say, squeeze tight, tight, tight. Now, very openly in front of her, I reach over, get a little ashes on there, and I rub it on her hand. Now, that you don't want too much because you want it to disappear. That's a little bit heavy, so I'm going to knock. If I see that, I'll say, that's a little bit too much. Just a teeny bit, and I'll put some on her hand. You may not be able to see that there's just a little bit of ash on her hand because the reason I don't want too much is I want it to disappear. So I say, watch the ashes, Lori, as it disappears, okay? I'm just going to rub it and rub it <laughs> and rub. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. And look, the ashes is gone. It's completely disappeared. Do you know where the ashes went? And of course, she doesn't. She would have no idea, of course, unless she bought the video. I say, look inside your hand. And look, there on her palm are the ashes. Believe me, when you've had this trick done to you and you don't know the secret, it is a mind blower. And that is how you do Mystic Ashes. You'll find it easy to meet people now that you know a little magic. You've seen all 10 tricks explained and used in flirting situations. Now I recommend going back and practicing along with the tape. Key in on three or four specific tricks you liked best. 
Your confidence will build as you see others respond. You'll find when you have a little magic, the flirting comes easy. The greatest thing I can teach you is to go out and have fun. Just do it. Be yourself and use the exciting magic you learned in this course. If you're looking to turn your social life around, no matter who you are, all you need is a little magic.